All right, this is the bastard news, and these are the news headlines. Strange apocalyptic noises heard above Sutton in Ashfield. Can you hear that? Mason, stop playing with that flipping gate. Sutton in Ashfield police break every parking rule in the book. Look at that. He only went in he only went to chip shop for a bag of chips. Fuck your park like that! Ashfield District Council used three men and a JCB to plant a few trees. I mean, I'd have just given an immigrant a spade and a bit of elbow grease and said crack on. England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales found on a toilet floor. Perfectly symmetrical triangle found in the clouds above Huthwaite. We'll get to that in a minute. Frank Skinner and David Bedil knew what were going off. Have we got any letters at all? Yeah, Louise Carpenter from Shrewsbury says, Dear Frank and David, my eight-year-old daughter loved the Jimmy Savile World Cup comment slot that you did at the beginning of the series. She keeps asking, what has happened to it? Will it be back? Yeah. Eight-year-old girls love Jimmy Savile, though, don't they? And of yeah. course... Anyway, I won't go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he loves her slot. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Welcome to the Bastard News. Did you know that the Flat Earth Society has members from all around the globe? Yeah. Which brings me on to my first... First story. The first topic. The triangle in the skies above Uthwaite. Look at that. My mate, a very close compondre of mine, Scott Keelan, sent me this photo in. He sent me four or five of them. I mean, what what do you make of that? A random accident? I mean, there are things going off on this planet that we cannot conceive. Technology is unimaginable. So, you know, just thought I'd put that out there for people to ponder over. If you want the original image, get in touch with me. And I'll, I'll see if Scott will let me, you know, hand it out willy-nilly. In a minute, we're going to be covering some interesting information I've been digging out about bailiffs, what they can and can't do, your rights. We're going to be empowering you today. Um, but first, I mean, I've, I've had, um, especially on Facebook, a lot of people asking me about Parking Eye. They've been getting a lot of tickets from KFC and Sutton in Ashfield. So I went down there to see if I could figure out a way around it. Check this out. So what's happening is people are... Uh, driving into the car park and, and a picture is taken of the car and then a picture is taken when they leave the car park and then if they have stayed for over the allotted time then they get a ticket if I've been staying over the allotted time I don't go out of the exit to which the camera is pointing I go through the flipping drive through I go through the drive through at KFC, sometimes you have to queue, and then I go out of this entrance, which has no camera taking a picture of the car, therefore you don't get done, you don't get a ticket. Jobs are good in. <sighs> Fuck you, smart park, it's not smart park and it's parking eye. Sod off parking eye. Right, so, bailiffs. What they can and can't do. Been getting a few questions here and there. Gonna try and answer them. Are bailiffs allowed to take my vehicle? Well, yes. Bailiffs are allowed to take your vehicle. There are some exceptions to this. Which are... A vehicle which is necessary for your work, study or business and where there is no alternative public transport you could use instead. I mean, bailiffs... Let me take these flipping glasses. I don't even need glasses. 2020 vision. Bailiffs can be pretty crooked. They don't care about rules and regulations a lot of the time. So, you know, I'm just letting you know that this is ammunition for you. And that there's some awesome stuff in here. A um, few exceptions to this. Um... A vehicle which you are paying for on higher purchase of contract. A vehicle displaying a disabled badge or used for transporting a cripple. A vehicle which is also your home, such as a motorhome. Um, where can bailiffs take a vehicle from? 
A bailiff can only usually take a vehicle from your home, your place or trade of business, the public highway. The bailiff can't take your vehicle if it is parked on private land. For example, a car park, whether this is private or publicly owned. The driveway of a family member or friend. So, if you park your car on your next door neighbour's drive with permission, the bailiffs can't clamp it. They, they have to get permission from the court. Um, a garage way f away from your home, a storage unit away from your home, a piece of land belonging to someone else. This is important. So once you get your seven days notice, the seizure of vehicle, we're going to come and clamp your car sort of thing. Just park it right corner on your mates or your friend's property. Um, not on the road. The exception to this, to when the bailiff can take it off a friend's property... Um, is where the bailiff has got a court warrant allowing them to take your belongings in that location. A bailiff is usually like a bailiff is only likely to be able to get a court warrant if they have watched these premises and discovered you're parking your vehicle there regularly. They're unlikely to get a warrant if they're just no if they've just noticed that your car is somewhere else. And I'll provide. All links to this in the description box from the .gov websites and Citizens Advice Bureau. Will they be like the bailiffs I've seen on TV documentaries? No, no, no. Documentaries about bailiffs often focus on business debts and repossessions of homes or vehicles. This is because they have a legal right to break into property in these cases. For most types of debt, they don't have a right to break in. Parking tickets, council tax, whatnot. They haven't got those powers. The reality is that bailiffs spend a lot of their time knocking on doors and making payment arrangement, but this wouldn't make very interesting TV. Viewers are more likely to be interested in emotional or confrontational, confrontational situations, even those these are not as common in reality. I mean, dealing with bailiffs can, you know, it's not a pleasant experience a lot of the time. It's quite stressful. A lot of stuttering involved. Uh, but the situation depicted in soaps and TV documentaries is a lot worse than what happens in reality. Can the police get involved with bailiffs? The police can only help a bailiff do their job in very limited circumstances. This is a loud if. A bailiff is enforcing a high court writ of control. The bailiff has applied to the court for a warrant to force entry and the court has agreed that the police can help with this. The police can't help the bailiff in any other circumstance. The police may attend in some cases to make sure there's no disturbance. They have to remain impartial and they have to help the bailiff and they can't help the bailiffs. If you act in a threatening or aggressive manner, you obviously you can be arrested. You can't be arrested for fuse, refusing entry to a bailiff if they've not already been in and made a list of stuff. So if the police are there and they're helping the bailiffs, they're breaking the law. Disgusting, wretched, filthy, buckets of maggot sick, laden with rat droppings. Yeah. Think that's virtually it to do with bailiffs. There was something else. No, got any any questions about this? Leave them in description. In leave them in comment section. And I'll try to figure out some answers for you. <coughs> but now I'm going to leave you with this phone call to TV licensing, and then after that the weather with Warwick Dale font. Thank you and good day. Good morning, TV licensing. You're speaking to Paul Ryan. Do you have a license or a reference for me, please? Hey. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. Do you have a license or a reference for me, please? Hello, my name's Johnny Stewart. Right, do you have a license or a reference for me, please? Not really. No. Right. Can I tell the first line of your address? 
Hang on. <clears throat> There's a man and a woman looking through the window. Right. They think I'm odd. That's all they think. You get people chasing you and looking for you and want to chin you and all that sort of stuff. And how can I help you today? Nobody takes advantage of an 84-year-old pensioner who limps a bit. Uh, how can I help you, sir, sir? I got, er, uh, 74 pence a week. I've got five places to live in, in England, and not one of them have an oven. Right, so how is it I can help you, sir? We've got this little place in Leeds. What are we doing wrong? Oh, come on, what are we doing wrong? Are you talking to me? Yes, why? Right, I'm just uh, having a little trouble understanding how you need me to help you today. If you've got a pound in your pocket, somebody somewhere wants it. And they will come up with all sorts of reasons why you should give them a pound out of your pocket. It could be your last pound, they don't care about that. Okay. There's new strokes for new folks, and they're all going to come and try and cop for a few quid off me, and they've got no chance at all. If I was a ghost, I wouldn't even give them a fright, you see. Right. Now then. Right, now then, um, I'll... You can't come in here. Can't come in where? Unbelievable villains. I've got some considerable clout as well all over. Got what? I've got some considerable clout as well, all over. Dying a slow, strangulated death. <laughs> That's an accident. That's an accident. Are you all right? I am, yeah. Are you all right? I was a thief. I did what I did. Nobody got nicked. I got away with it. If you can get away with it. Okay. Now, you have got a very special staff. I'm sorry? I'm trying to answer your question. I've got the ability to make a few quid, because I'm tricky. Right. You've been a very tricky man. Yeah, um, how can C.B. Licensing help you with this? It occurred to me, with respect, it's only £8.10 a week. Let me work out the things that I'd like. Okay. I've got five places to live in, in England and not one uh, of them. Would you like a TV licence? No, it's a bit cynical, is that? Why would that be cynical? Very strange. Very strange. Very odd. Not for me. Uh, I, I completely on. agree. Hang on. Pop, 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 pop. Hang about. It's too good, is this? Do you want to come and see me? Sorry? Do you want to come and see me? Do I want to come and see you? No, I'm all right, thanks. Well, you can't be on your own. Just have a nice time, have a good time, and go out with friends and pals, and... You can do with me what you want. Right. Okay. I used to get complaints from guys and girls at school. In bed with them, right? I'm feared in every girls' school in this country. First of all, I'm a rare breed insofar as I'm a single fella. All I know is that most people want one wife. I quite fancied having a thousand, like King Solomon. Okay. Hey. All right, King Solomon. Right, I'm going to have to go now. So, how's about this then? <coughs> I am a travelling pirate, right? Right. If you've got a pound in your pocket, Somebody, somewhere, wants it. And they will come up with all sorts of reasons why you should give them 
a pound out of your pocket. It could be your last pound. They don't care about that. You get people chasing you and looking for you and want to chin you and all that sort of stuff. What on earth for a job? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jimmy Savile! And a last look at the weather in our region tomorrow shows that it will be mostly drizzly and a bit chilly. Overall, pretty shit. And with the time coming up to 20 past midnight, that brings us to the end of our programmes here tonight on Yorkshire Television. So this is Warwick Delfont wishing you a very good night, and don't forget to switch off your set. Good night.